All right, everybody. So we are going to start up talking about the antiparasitic drug. Now, if you remember, even in the junior classes, I'm sure in you must have studied about malaria, and you already know what is the cycle of malaria and everything. So, wait, I've got a message. Maria, Viva would be whenever we would finish up with the leftover junk. Okay? So, we have to decide the date. Okay? Alright, so let's start. So, these are the infections which are caused by the parasite and today we will be focusing on anti-malarial drugs. Tomorrow, inshallah, I will try to finish up a big chunk of this topic so that we would be over with uh, drugs that are causing infections, oh sorry, drugs that are treating infections uh, very quickly, okay? All right. So, as I said, the first one we'll be doing today is anti-malarial drugs. So, I'm sure you must have, you already know about this cycle, right? That what happens is a mosquito, female Anopheles mosquito, it bites a human being, parasite gets into the body, into the blood, the parasite enters the hepatic cells, they reproduce, they multiply, and then there are different cycles, right? Different steps in between. And then there's merozoid stage, where actually they, um, at this stage, the mature liver, liver cell, it ruptures. And as a result, the parasite is released into the blood blood right blood, red blood cells they attack on the red blood cells then they again go into the cycle where they multiply themselves right and then they rupture now when they rupture i'm sure you all know already that here at this stage they are differentiated into male and female gametocytes and then they are being sucked up by the female anopheles mosquito and then inside their gut inside the gut wall of the uh, mosquito it reproduces the parasite reproduces right and then after reproduction they they enter into the salivary gland of the mosquito and then the mosquito when it bites a human again so it is transmitted right so this is the entire cycle so, in the primary state of infection, sporozoids are injected into the host by the female mosquito. Okay. Uh, in this pre erythrocytic stage, the sporozoids are resistant to drug therapy. So, the sporozoids migrate to liver and then sporulate um, later on. Okay. So, the merozoids that emerge infect erythrocytes where asexual division leads to cell lysis and causes clinical symptoms. So in um, P. vivax and P. ovale, the merozoids released can in reinfect other RBCs, reinfect the liver or differentiate into sexual forms that is gametocytes that can reproduce in the gut of another female mosquito as i've just said so elimination of parasites from erythrocytes and liver requires multi-drug therapy uh, effect as a cure okay so uh this p malaria and p falciparum differ from the other plasmodia in that the merozoids cannot reinfect the liver to reproduce a secondary exoerythrocytic stage, the lack of tissue reservoir that makes therapy somewhat easier. So when we talk about therapy, okay, so the first drug that that I'm sure we all have learned, uh, heard of multiple times is chloroquinine. So Chloroquine concentrates in acidic parasite vacuoles, raising their pH and inhibiting the activity of heme polymerase, which converts host hemoglobin toxic 
by products to non toxic poly uh, polymerized material so chloroquine is used for the control of acute recurrent attacks but that is not radically curative so it is effective against all plasmodia for chloroquine resistant plasmodium quinine sulfate is used so pyrimethamine sulfadoxin doxycycline quinidine or clindamycin may be used as an adjunctive therapy then prophylaxis chloroquine is used to suppress erythrocytic forms either before or during exposure then we have a uh, primaquine it is added after exposure to treat exoerythric forms in region with chloroquine resistant strain mefloquine or atovaquin pro guanin is used for prophylaxis so doxycycline and antibiotic is used when multi drug resistant to peep salsiparum is prevalent chloroquine is also occasionally used in rheumatoid arthritis for anti inflammatory reaction and as an alternative with amidin for amebiasis that we will study later on so many species of p falciparum are resistant to chloroquine artemisin analogs are now widely used instead rarely hemolysis can develop in glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficient persons so pruritus is common rapid parenteral administration or a single high dose may be fatal then we'll talk about primaquine so in combination with chloroquine primaquine is used specifically to eliminate liver high um, hypnozoid after exposure to pvvex or pova for terminal prophylaxis and cure from malaria it can be also used for prophylaxis before exposure so when other drugs are ineffective or unavailable primaquine is not given parenterally because of severe hypotension that is uh, um uh blood dis discharges or anti or, or arrhythmia may rarely occur primaquine can result in intravascular hemolysis or methemoglobinemia in african americans or dark skin caucasians with glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency due to re the relative deficiency of glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase use of this agent is not advised during the first trimester of pregnancy then we have quinine and quinidine quinine is active against the erythrocytic stage it is primarily used to treat chloroquine resistant p falciparum often in combination with doxycycline quinine has a low therapeutic index so this agent produces curare like effects on the skeletal muscles what is curare like effects can anybody tell me i'm sure you must have studied this that in the last term last year actually i i want you people to uh, send me in the chat box what is curare like effects and i'm moving on and then after completing the slide i'll take your responses so and it can cause headache nausea visual disturbances dizziness and tinnitus tinnitus is like a uh, it's a sound that is there in the air okay so see that kind of sound okay um, a sharp sound in the air okay anyways hypoglycemia which can be fatal and rarely hypertension may also occur guys i don't have any responses yet what is 
to rear like a pig. I'm waiting for the response. So basically, you know, um, its action was to prevent acetylcholine, okay, and it would it, it would lead to paralysis, right? Relaxation of the muscles. Mm. Okay. Quinine is associated with black water fever in previously sensitized patients. Although rare, black water fever has a fatality rate of 25% due to intravascular coagulation and renal failure. So, intravenous administration of quinidine should include cardiac monitoring. Then we have mefloquine. Uh, wait a minute, guys. So, it is used for prophylaxis and the treatment of chloroquine resistant P falciparum with, uh, and with chloroquine for prophylaxis against P. vivax and P. ovale. Uh, it acts specifically on the erythrocytic stage of infection for eradication of uh, falciparum and it is used for uh, with RC senate. For eradication of P. ovale and P. vivax, it is used with primaquine. So, mefloquinine causes GI disturbances at therapeutic doses. Seizures and other TNS manifestations are also seen. So, use of mefloquine is contraindicated in patients with epilepsy or psychiatric disorders and in patients using drugs that alter cardiac conduction. Then we have atovacune um, and its combination with uh, proguanine. So atovacune inhibits electron transport to reduce the membrane potential of mitochondria. Resistance develops rapidly in this case. So co-administration of atovacune with Proguanil is effective for the treatment and prophylaxis of P. falciparum. The mechanism of antimalarial action of proguanil is uncertain. Its metabolite, cycloguanil, selectively inhibits plasmodia dihydrofolate reductase or uh, thymidylate, thymidylate synthase to inhibit DNA synthesis. So these drugs are generally well tolerated. Adverse effects include GI dysfunction, headache, and rash. So atovacone is used as an alternative treatment for uh, P. Jerovicki pneumonia. Okay. Then we have pyrimethamine. So and it's pro drug analog proguanil. It inhibits dihydrofolate reductase of plasmodia at concentrations less than that needed to inhibit the host enzyme. It is used in combination with sulfadoxane or sulfonamide with similar pharmacological properties in combination with the drug uh, Fancidar. So pyrimethamine is associated with megaloblastic anemia, and folate deficiency at higher doses. Antibacterial agents so, such as sulfonamides and sulfones are particularly important in the prophylaxis of chloroquine-resistant strains. So tetracyclines and doxycycline are used as short-term prophylactic agents in areas with multi-drug strains of plasmodium. Then we have um, artemisinin. 
so it is the active agent of a herbal medicine uh, it and its major synthetic analogs artisanate and rt mithir are now widely used in a variety of combination treatments depending on the region of the world um, so these are standard therapy to treat uh, p falciparum these agents are rapidly metabolized to dihydro rt methin methin uh, which has a good activity for the initial treatment of the erythrocytic stage of p falciparum infection so adverse effects include gi disturbances and rarely allergic reactions and anemia then we have uh, lumfentril the mechanism of which is unclear is used as first line therapy to treat erythrocytic stage of p falciparum but only in combination uh, in a combination preparation with artemether its adverse effects um uh, profile is relatively unremarkable thank you so much everybody i can understand today you guys had your exam and you almost be tired right now